John Derbyshire is uh, apparently a well-known conservative. He has written for the National Review for a long time. And he's well respected uh, by other conservatives. Now, in 2003, he really basically hinted that uh, he, well, he didn't hint, he said that he was uh, homophobic and racist, but that he was a tolerant one. We'll get back to that. Um, so, and he never uh, retracted that. But people thought, I mean, come on, you're not really racist, are you? Well, it turns out he is. Uh, because when writing, not for the National Review, but for a magazine called Tacky, I guess, um, he decided to write his version of the talk, but this time for white people. Now, African Americans have the talk, as people have been writing about recently because of the Trayvon Martin case, with their kids. And the talk is, hey, listen, be careful when you're out there, don't talk back to the cops, et cetera. All these different things that you gotta watch out for because there's some chance that there, you might be faced with discrimination out there and that discrimination might literally be dangerous. It might be a danger to your life. So Derbyshire says, well, I gotta have this talk with my kids too. But they're white, and so I gotta warn them about black people. Uh oh, interesting. So, what does he warn them about? Here we go. He says, Avoid concentrations of blacks, not all known to you personally. Stay out of heavily black neighborhoods. If planning a trip to a beach or amusement park at some date, find out whether it's likely to be swamped with blacks on that date. Neglect of that one got me the closest I have ever gotten to death by gunshot. <laughs> you know how those blacks are. Continues, do not attend events likely to draw a lot of blacks. If you're at some public event at which the number of blacks suddenly swells, leave as quickly as possible. Now, is anyone confused yet as to whether this guy's a racist or not? Okay, any doubts? Okay, you see a lot of black folks run for the hills. Literally what he's saying, okay? Okay, uh, but it gets worse. So he continues, do not act the Good Samaritan to blacks in apparent distress, e.g. on the highway. So not only should you run away from blacks, but if they're in trouble, don't bother helping them like you would with other human beings, because they're black. <laughs> Come on. Now, I don't know if he's saying here that who cares about blacks? They're not, their lives aren't valuable, so if they're in distress, obviously you ignore them. Or it's some elaborate ruse, like, oh, you go to help a black person, but then, of course, they get you. Why? Because they're black. All right, he continues. If accosted by a strange black in the street, smile and say something polite, but keep moving. Now, I like that one because uh, he's beginning to tell you how he deceives people on a regular basis. Like, so you're racist, but you don't let the blacks know. I mean, obviously, just be like, oh, be polite. Like, oh, right, well, of course, I have no problems with you, but secretly, I'm thinking, I gotta get out of here because you're black. Okay, now, this is what is being quoted by most of the press and then uh, the National Review wound up firing him. I'll get to their expla explanation in a second. But I actually thought other parts of the, his uh, article were much worse. Now, let's talk about what he said about intelligence. So here we go on things that uh, John Derbyshire has made up in his mind. Uh, one, here we go. Only one black in six is more intelligent than the average white. Five whites out of six are more intelligent than the average black. I love how specific this stuff is. These differences show in every test of general cognitive ability that anyone of any race or nationality has yet been able to devise. They are reflected in countless everyday situations. Life is an IQ test. Now, I love this quote. Why? First, I like the specificity with which he has made up numbers. Five out of six whites are smarter than the average black guy. And one out of six, right? And then second of all, he says, I got this idiot blacks. And he writes it down. In, some, in an article that will obviously get him fired. Even if he believes this stuff, think about how stupid it is to write this down in a way that it's gonna cost you your job. Who's stupid now, John Derbyshire? So <laughs> life is an IQ test, isn't it? And you just failed it. And telling me about how uh, blacks aren't bright enough. <laughs> okay, now uh, more absurd facts made up out of John Derbyshire's, uh, to be polite, we'll say out of his head. Okay, uh, talking about uh, African Americans overall, he says, let me give you the exact quote here. I gotta get you the first part too. Uh, okay, here we go. A small cohort of blacks, in my experience, around 5%, is uh, ferociously hostile to whites and will go to great lengths to inconvenience or harm us. Again, I love the specificness of this. Uh, 5%, very hostile to whites. Uh, a much larger cohort of blacks, around half, 
will go along passively if the 5% take leadership in some event. They will do this out of racial solidarity, the natural willingness of most human beings to be led, and a vague feeling that whites have it coming. Okay, so here are more made up facts. 5% uh, of blacks are hostile to whites. Where did he get that fact? And then 50% will go along with the 5% that are hostile if you're in a crowd of blacks, which I already told you to avoid by not going to Great Adventure. Okay. Okay, um, but here's one of my favorite quotes from the article. So he's already told you what a wild racist he is, how he thinks all blacks are dangerous, you should never help them, they're all stupid, uh, or most of them are stupid, uh, and that they will uh, probably try to hurt you, especially if they're in a large crowd. Now, he's gonna say, nonetheless, you should be friends with some blacks. Oh, that's interesting, now why is that? He explains. In that pool of 40 million African Americans that he's referring to, there are nonetheless, many intelligent and well-socialized blacks. You should consciously seek opportunities to make friends with what he calls those intelligent and well-socialized blacks. In addition to the ordinary pleasures of friendship, you will gain an amulet against potentially career-destroying accusations of prejudice. So in other words, be horribly racist, but have a couple of fake black friends or perhaps even real black friends, so that you can say, I'm not prejudiced, I have a black friend. I've never seen anyone lay out how conservatives work any more honestly than this guy has. I mean, this is conservative 101, but they're not supposed to say it, okay? But here is this guy saying, yeah, of course our few black friends are the guys that we use as an amulet to protect us so that you don't charge us with racism when we're obviously racist. But the way he phrases it gets even more offensive finally here when he says, unfortunately, the demand is greater than the supply. So intelligent and well-socialized blacks are something of a luxury good, like antique furniture or corporate jets. Well, what does that harken back to? I think it's fairly obvious. So I would like to acquire this black friend as I would furniture, because he will protect me from charges of racism. Well, now you know how they work. Uh, and by the way, that is why a lot of the conservative writers are furious with John Derbyshire now. And uh, Matt Lewis of the Daily Caller said he has done more damage to the conservative cause than any liberal could have dreamed of doing. Why? Because he let us know how they all actually think. Now, does every conservative in the country think this way? No, of course not. Do a lot of them think this way? Apparently so.